So I typically don't buy the same model running shoe twice in a row, partially because I just like to try different things. And also, I just haven't found a shoe that enamored me enough I wanted to buy it a second time. However, there have been two exceptions to that. One is the Saucony Peregrine, which is a trail running shoe, and the other one are these Ultra Paradigms. Hi, I'm Ralph, and welcome to Aegis Runner. I don't know if you're familiar with the Ultra Running Company and their shoes, but they make zero drop shoes. Uh, so let's do a little primer on what we mean by drop or zero drop. Uh, heel drop or heel to toe drop is probably a better term, is the amount that the toes drop from the heel when sitting in the shoe. I like to think of it as how high are the heel sitting above the toe. So if you have a 10 millimeter offset shoe, for example, or drop, sometimes it's called drop, sometimes it's called offset, it means that your heel sits 10 millimeters higher than your toes in that shoe. So offsets or heel drops can range from zero drop, like my Ultra Paradigms here, all the way up to 14 to 16 is even out there. Uh, now, the probably the most common is 10 to 12 millimeters, and the amount of offset and the amount of drop is really more of a personal preference. There's very little data or studies out there to say that the amount of offset or drop affect injury rates. Uh, there is a little bit of data to suggest that injuries, uh, where injuries occur, are impacted by offset. For example, if you have a higher drop shoe, you may be more likely to injure yourself in the upper part of your leg. And if you have a lower drop shoe or lower offset shoe, you may be more likely to injure yourself in the lower part of your leg. So really the biggest impact offset has is more on your gait. If you have a very high heel stack or very high offset, you may be more likely to heel strike and, and land a little farther out uh, from your body. Whereas a lower offset shoe or lower drop shoe may be more prone to striking midfoot and forefoot. Uh, so it really depends on your gait. I would try different offsets, see what works best for you. I have, over the years, found that I like a lower drop shoe. And by low, I mean something under eight millimeters. So I typically either get zero drop, like these Ultra Paradigms, or a four millimeter. Those uh, Peregrines I mentioned are four millimeters. I have a pair of uh, Saucony Freedoms that are four millimeters. So those are all lower drop shoes. Now, if I were to probably give one word to describe the Paradigm, the Paradigm 6, I would call it a maximalist shoe. In other words, this is a cushion shoe, a little bit on the heavy side, as we'll talk about here a little later, but it's a nice cushion shoe, very supportive. Uh, ultra, uh, typical Ultra shoe, it has this uh, foot shape. You can see it's a little wider toe box to help uh, give you plenty of toe room. You see it even a little better when you look at the Obama shoe. They call this their foot pod outsole. It's meant to better uh, conform to the shape of the foot. The paradigm's a little unique. If, if you go to the Ultra website, and you know all website uh, running shoe websites kind of classify their shoes in different categories, they put this shoe in what they call their road dynamic support shoe. Well, what the heck does that mean? In fact, if you search around the Ultra site, you can find nothing to describe what, what does road dynamic support mean. So I actually contact their cust customer support and got a definition of what is road dynamic support. And let me read that to you. So Ultra defines their dynamic support shoe as as a shoe that helps guide feet and improve form only when a runner shows signs of fatigue. They also are ideal for those who have collapsed arches or excessive pronation. So what does that mean? And, and when we talk about the paradigm, you get a little better idea of what they mean and why they call that dynamic road, road dynamic support. So there's a couple of things about the paradigm that, that lends itself to supporting your foot, especially if you overpronate or supinate like I do. One of the first things they talk about is what they call their guide rail technology. You can see how the rubber or the plastic in the shoe comes up a little higher than you might see in a typical shoe. They have this both on the medial side, the inside, and also on the outside of the shoe, the lateral side. So it comes up a little farther. And what that's meant to do is, again, provide that that pocket for your shoe, for your foot to ride in. And if you tend to overpronate or supinate like I do, it's kind of meant to help keep you in centered in the shoe to help minimize that, that pronation. Now, the next thing they do as far as support, they have a feature here they call it Innovarch. And on the side of the shoe here where the uh, lacing is, they have a little tab here that actually moves. I don't know if you can see that as I pull on that, it actually moves. And when you lace it up, that pulls uh, some straps that go inside the shoe under some mesh and helps pull the bottom mesh of the shoe up against your arch. And again, that's meant to provide some arch support. So if you over pronate, when you pronate, you tend to want to roll to the inside. And when you start rolling, your arch can tend to collapse. So that Innovarch technology is meant to help 
help with that collapsed arch or just give general arch support in general in general now i i wear a custom orthotic so that adds some rigidity to the shoe uh, for me so i don't know that i benefit a lot from that uh, particular shoe technology but it's there if um, if that would help you now the the midsole of this is the, the cushion that's inside is what they call the ultra ego max that's that's only used in a few of their shoes more of their premium shoes uh, it's meant to be a plush uh, cushiony ride it's not it's not too bouncy as numbers it's not too firm it gives you a nice cushion ride but it has some response you can typically feel what's going on underneath your foot but it's not maybe as responsive as me a, a more firmer foam that you might get uh, for example my Saucony Convaras are a little more firmer and they're a little more responsive a little more bouncy to the feel under underfoot uh, now the other thing they do on the outsole is they call it their inner flex and you notice the tread pattern here you notice they have these kind of like semi-spherical threads that go across the width of the shoe that's meant they say to provide some flexibility to the shoe as you run so that pattern uh, is meant to aid in your running and aid in that flexibility. Well, it does not, I don't know. As I said, I've, I've got custom orthotic inserts that I put inside my shoes. Those, by, the, by very nature, add a little bit of stiffness to all of my shoes, uh, but it's there for something you would like, a little more flexible shoe. Now, the upper, they call it a, a, an engineered mesh. Now, they did say they reworked it to make it a little more breathable, but some, I've read some reviewers that... Uh, complain about the breathability of the paradigm and I've not uh, drove these enough to say whether I think it's a problem. Uh, my paradigm fives were fine. I never I really had a problem with hot feet or breathability with my feet. So if they've improved this, I think that'll probably be fine for me. So I said earlier, this is a little bit of a heavier shoe. The stack height in this, the cushion is 30 millimeters. That's a little bit on the plush side, but then it is a, it's meant to be a cushion ride shoe. My Saucony Exodus, which is a trail running shoe, is 31.5. That's probably the highest stack height that I have in the heel of any of my shoes. Whereas my Saucony Freedoms are 27.5, and I think the Convars are 28.5. So this is kind of a little bit to the high side as far as stack height or thickness of the cushion, but that's kind of what I wanted. So the way the shoe is a little bit on the high side, these are a size 11, and my size 11 weigh 11.7 ounces. Now, if I compare that to my, these are my Saucony Canvaras, this is a really light shoe. This weighs 3.3 .3 ounces less uh, than, than the Ultra Paradigm. So that makes this shoe just under 8.5 ounces. So do you care about that? Well, if you want a fast shoe, if you want to run fast, if you care about time, then you might want a lighter shoe. On the other hand, if you want a cushion ride, you might want that little heavier shoe. You might want that support. So that's kind of why I got the Paradigm. So how would I send this up? So the Paradigm is a cushion ride. If you want uh, something to reduce impact on your joints, you also want something to support your, your foot. Uh, if you tend to get tired, tend to pronate more, uh, this is what you want. This is a Paradigm. Of course, you got to want zero drop also. However, if you are interested in in speed, time, setting personal personal records on pace. This is not your shoe. This is a heavy shoe. This is a cushion shoe. You want something that's lighter weight and more responsive. So one last word on zero drop. If you decide you want to try a zero drop or zero offset shoe or a low offset shoe, please be sure to ease yourself into it. When you put on a pair of zero drop shoes from maybe using your 10 to 12 millimeter offset shoes, you'll notice a stretch or a strain in your calves. So you want to build up to that. So you may want to take your zero drop shoes run a few miles this week, add a few miles the next week, and build up to wearing those shoes over the course of a few weeks. You know, let the stretch and strain of your calves discomfort uh, sensation in your calves be your guide, but gradually build up to wearing these full time. Hey, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate the time you spent looking at this video. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, also scroll down and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps my channel. So thanks again for watching and happy running.